So today we're going to cover a topic, one of my favorite topics. Y'all know what it is. We're going to talk about the sister thing. All about my favorite, favorite topic. No, I'm just going to But the name of the class is Where Sinners Fear to Tread. Where Sinners Fear to Tread. You should be asking. You get it. Why do some men disrespect, beat, and rape women? Because single mothers... Raise cold-hearted, effeminate boys in their image. That's some disrespectful stuff right there. Give me Second Ezra 5 and 8. Second Ezra. Wait. I said something else too. Marry before you carry. Marry before you carry. But sisters got it backwards. They will carry before they marry. Then once they carry your baby, they decide, I don't want to marry you. You're not marriage material. But they got your baby in them. And that's what brings, read this now, 2nd Edges 5 yes, and 8. 2nd Edges 5 and 8. There shall be a confusion also in many places, and the fire shall be off sent out again, and the wild beasts shall change their places, and menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. Menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. These are those uh, women that carry before they marry. That's them. Now look at this. Give me Isaiah 312. You know the precept. Isaiah 3 and 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors. Because these are these monsters grown up. Children have become our oppressors. Go ahead. And women rule over them. And these women are the head of the house. Okay? These women are single parents. Go ahead. Oh, my people, they which lead thee. These women, go ahead. Cause thee to err. They cause us to err. Read, read. And destroy the way of thy path. And destroy the way of our path. Now, in case somebody says, well, how do you know that those children is really talking about Israelite children? Jump over to verse 4. Verse 4. And I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. Watch the next verse. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient. The child will disrespect the older people. You see that today. That's what it means. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient. Go ahead. And the base against the honorable. And a low type of kids will disrespect the honorable people amongst our communities. That's what you got going on today, which leads me to the video that Aisha showed last night. I want to look at it again. Show me the video. Uh, about the boy that got just got arrested in Harlem. This is what the scriptures is talking about. Play it. Oh, you're setting it up. All right. So this is the situation in Harlem. And I tell you, it's, you can't be nice to some people, to these these young boys that become our oppressors. You ain't. Now, we're not saying the white man ain't the devil. You know he is. But when we go home and things like that, we ain't worried about the white man robbing us point blank or beating the hell out of us right on the corner where we live. Go ahead, play it. An update on a heinous attack caught on camera in Harlem. Police have made an arrest in the case. Welcome back here. I'm Maurice Dubois. And I'm Christine Johnson. A woman was brutally attacked by a group of men outside a liquor store after she says she declined an offer to pay for the bottle of wine. Police say one of the suspects is in custody after they arrested him in another case. CBS 2's Lisa Rosner has the story. The scars from January 18th sent shockwaves throughout Harlem. The nigga bit her. Hold on, pause that. The Negro bit her in the head. Almost took her eye out. Go ahead. One year old woman chased, kicked, and aggressively bitten outside a liquor store on West 128th Street. Surveillance video we obtained showed it happened just after she had walked inside alone to buy a bottle of wine. And she says the man in red, who police say is 22-year-old Tyrone Cooper, offered to pay. She told us... I politely declined and I said, you know, no thank you, but thank you, I um, could pay for it myself. And then I got ready to walk out, and before I walk out, he basically said that 
he felt like I thought that I was better than them. Cooper was taken into police custody Sunday for a separate incident. He appeared in Brooklyn Criminal Court Tuesday for allegedly choking and punching his girlfriend at this apartment building on 51st Street in East Flatbush. Sources say she told police Cooper misunderstood something she said. The judge ordered him be held on $3,000 bail. Sources tell us that Cooper is now being brought here to the 32nd Precinct in Harlem for charges related to the liquor store attack. But complaints from Manhattan Manhattan and Brooklyn show he's been arrested several times before for other assaults. There needs to be some penalties and he needs to be arrested and not back out on these streets. He needs to do some time. In Brooklyn last May, it's at the Clark Street subway station that Cooper allegedly asked someone for money, punched them in the face and pushed them to the ground. He also faces charges of gang assault, menacing and harassment in connection to a slashing at the Church Street station last year. And he's accused of stealing MTA gate keys at the Park Avenue South station. Now that Cooper is in police custody, the victim of the Harlem attack posted on Instagram, I couldn't and still can't understand why so much rage. She pointed out that two other suspects in her attack have still not been caught and said, I'm healing well and continuing to appreciate life as it is. One down, two to go. In Harlem, Lisa Rosner, CBS 2 News. And as for the... Now, now the only way she got caught, remember it said he was arrested on an unrelated charge. So ASAP showed it last night. He got arrested because he beat his girlfriend up and broke her jaw. Wow. The girlfriend, and watch this. This is how diabolical this thing is. When the first girl was getting uh, bitten, the girlfriend was there. His girlfriend was outside, wow. watched the whole thing. So, she knows she got a recurring so, but the girlfriend wasn't telling nothing. She was arguing with the boyfriend at home. They've been only dating for a month. By the way, you month, you uh, sisters always want to court somebody you just meet. You simply, you're going to get one of these monsters, these monstrous boys out here. So they arguing at home about what he was doing. So he broke her jaw. That's when she told the police he's also the one that did that to the girl. So that's the only way he got, she wasn't going to say nothing. Now, Malachi, remember that class you taught in Leviticus 5 and 1? Where it said, if you hear the voice of swearing, whether you have seen it or known of it, if you, it says swearing and some other things. It said, if you do not utter it, you shall bear the judgment. So the girlfriend got her, the beat down. All oh, that's the power of God behind that thing. People be thinking, that's why Paul said in Romans, the law is spiritual. They are spiritual, they are, what's the term? Uh, they are cause and effect. You don't want to say nothing, Lord. So you don't want to say nothing. Okay, I'm going to cause an argument here. He going to bust you in your chop and break your jaw. Her mouth was wide shut. That's how bad he broke her, broke her jaw. You know. So, give me Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6. But you know what? I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say we give, we put rules out in IUIC schools. Don't be quick to date one of these brothers because some of them ain't right. But guess what? Nobody listens. Nobody listens. I'm talking about you backdoor sisters. You know who you are. We got one sister. She caught in a brother for three months. They send a text message, I think, to Captain Amaziah. We, we ready to get married now. Three months they've been talking. Only three months. This is the stupidity of some of you sisters. I'm blaming the sisters. That's right, I'm blaming the sisters. You know why I'm blaming the sisters? Because once the brother gets you, uh, 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 once he wear, uh, get through with you, he leave you. And a lot of times, that's how you, a lot of these times, you get to single mothers. Because the brother, that ain't my baby. You was dealing with somebody else. Then he walk out. And he gone. So sisters got to take extra precaution. I know the BH, I don't want to hear this. The black Hebrew Israelites online. Some of them don't want to hear this. Now, the story that we just discussed, right? Can you imagine if, I, you got to ask, many of the Israelites, the black Hebrew Israelites will never talk about topics like that. Only uh, except one thing. There has to be one thing, one reason they would talk about it. Who knows? Why would the other black Hebrew Israelites talk about a subject with this dude biting his sister, he robbed her, they beat her up, chased her down the street. There's only one reason the other black Hebrew Israelites would discuss that topic. Who knows? Y'all don't know? Oh, right there. Shalom. Thank you. That's it. If it was one of our members that did it, every black Hebrew Israelite in the world would say, how oh, do I see this? Look what they did. If it don't involve us, they don't give a damn. 
We set rules up in every congregation. Give it a year, sister, before you marry this dude. A minimum a year. I say two. And if he or she come out of that same-sex lifestyle, my suggestion is you better wait five years because that's a heavy spirit. But y'all don't listen. Here go another black, back, black door. Yes, just a black door marriage that just happened. A black door. <laughs> the brother comes home. The brother come home this back door. Black door, back door. He come home. He wants some cake. He had one piece of cake he saved in the fridge. I ain't going to say no names. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The daughter, the back door marriage, she had the, the, the single mother had a daughter, kind of a chubby daughter. She likes to eat. She ate the brother's piece of cake. So the brother's mad. Who yeah. my damn cake? I waited all week for that cake. Yeah. The wife says, babe, it ain't that serious. Don't get so emotional. You know what he does? Pow, bang, zoom. Right in the kisser. Twice. Bust upside the head. Twice. And she's dazzled around. What's going on? And she doesn't see those tweety birds around her head. That's what happens with these black backdoor marriages. You're going to get a monster. You're going to get these cold-hearted, effeminate boys. Exactly. One of, <laughs> one of the main problems that parents have with children is discipline or the lack thereof. Give me a uh, wisdom of Solomon chapter six and verse 17. Chapter six, verse 17, wisdom of Solomon. When you got children who have no discipline and that's cause that's how single parents raise these kids with no discipline. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter six and verse 17. For the very true beginning of her, talking about wisdom, is the desire of discipline. Is the desire of discipline. And the care of discipline is love. The care of discipline is love. Go ahead. And love is the keeping of her laws. If you got wisdom, that love teaches you to keep the laws. Go ahead. And the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. You have the assurance of incorruption. You have the assurance of immortality. That's what he's saying. Watch this. Give me Sirach 18, verse 14. Ecclesiasticus and the Apocrypha. Sirach 18 and verse 14. He have mercy on them that receive discipline. The Lord has mercy on them that receive discipline. Discipline is the keeping of God's laws. A lot of us want mercy. In order to get mercy, we must have the discipline of God. God. And that diligently seek after his judgment. And we got to diligently seek after the Lord's judgment. That goes back to his laws. Was that it? That's it. Go ahead. Give me uh, chapter 32 of Sirach, verse 14. Sirach 32 and verse 14. Sirach 32 and verse 14. Whoso feareth the Lord will receive his discipline. So if you fear the Lord, you're going to receive God's discipline, which is his law. His discipline is his laws. What is it? What is he disciplining? Is disciplining your, your mental, uh, your your mentality, the way you think, the way you act, the way you conduct yourself. That's what God's laws do. It teaches you not to steal. That's discipline. It teaches you not to have uh, desire sex with your neighbor's wife or spouse. That's a form of discipline. Control yourself, not to covet. That's your mental uh, capabilities. Control what the way you think. All right, read it again. Whoso fear of the Lord will receive his discipline, mm -hmm. and they that seek him early shall find favor. And they that seek him early will find favor. It's taken, you got to think about it, it has taken centuries of slavery for us to finally wake up to this truth. It's been centuries here in America uh, since we got off those slave ships. Centuries have gone by. Look at this, Job 36, verse 10. It got to the point where the Lord said, now they, they will be willing to receive my discipline. Because it's not going to get better. It's only going to get worse in this captivity. Read. Job 36 and 10. Mm -hmm. He openeth also their ear to discipline. The Lord opens our ears to discipline. Go ahead. And commandeth that they return from iniquity. And he commands us 
to return from iniquity. Read it again. Read it again. Yes, sir. He openeth also their ear to discipline mm -hmm. and commandeth that they return from iniquity. So that's what discipline does. Okay. He opens also our ear to discipline and commands that they return from iniquity. Read. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity. That's going into the kingdom. Go ahead. In their years in pleasures. Read. But if they obey not. You don't want the Lord's discipline. Discipline my thoughts. Discipline my actions. What? Read. They shall perish. We shall perish. Read. By the sword. Read. And they shall die without knowledge. And you're going to die a big dummy. You're just a dead dummy. Read. But the hypocrites in heart heap up wrath. The hypocrites in heart are those that know the truth and will not apply it at all. Go ahead. They cry not when he bindeth them. Read. They die in youth, and their life is among the unclean. Watch this. Read. He delivereth the poor in his affliction. We're the poor, like it says in Isaiah 14, verse 32. Read that for me. Get me the precept to show you that we're the poor. Isaiah 14 is around verse 32. Isaiah 14 and verse... The last th verse. Yes, sir, 32. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? That the Lord hath founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it. So when you read about the poor in the Bible, it's talking about Zion. It's talking about the Israelites. Don't get confused and think the poor is talking about... And it's talking about the poor in spirit, by the way. Because you had many Israelites that were wealthy. For example... Job was wealthy, okay? Nicodemus was wealthy. Joseph of Arimathea was wealthy. But guess what? They were still called the poor. Like it says in Matthew 5, give me that. Blessed are the poor in spirit. So Oprah, guess what Guess what she is in the Bible? The poor. What's the, the bald-headed black guy that made, he's like a billionaire. What's his name? Byron Allen. Guess what? God calls him the poor. Read that. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Why are we the poor in spirit? Because we've lost our heritage. We've, we've lost our culture, our language. We've lost our families. We've lost everything. We've lost our nation as a whole. Our 12 tribes have been disrupted and destroyed. So we're the poor. That's why we are the poor. It's not talking about your financial status. It's talking about your spiritual status. Go back to Job 36 and 15. Job chapter 36 and verse 15. He delivereth the poor in his affliction. So we are people being afflicted, and it's not going to stop. For example, the raid, that riot that happened in um, Washington, D.C. We There's no black leaders even speaking in regards to the injustice that's going on. Let me explain what I mean by that. There was the article with the brother. I forgot his name. Wow. The one that allegedly stole a book bag. Khalif Browder, right. He did three years without a trial in Rikers. God, he couldn't take it and broke his spirit. He committed suicide. The white woman stole Nancy Pelosi's laptop, threatened to sell it to Russia. That's treason. Edward Snowden, the other white boy, they charged with twitch treason. The other white boy, Wiki Leaks, I think is whatever his name is. Forgot his name. Treason. Julia Assange, thank you. Treason. This white woman who stole Nancy Pelosi's laptop, they let her out. They let her out to go home with her mama. You can't make this stuff up. At the same thing, there was a, 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 there was a black guy there who had a bat. Who had a bat. To this day, he's still in prison. The black guy. All them Edomites let one woman, they let her go on vacation to Mexico. You know Mexico has no extradition laws. Right. Right. You cannot extradite. Gone, and that's it. Right. She's just gone. They let her go on vacation in Mexico. You can't make this stuff up. Another one, the dude with the horns, they let him eat organic food. That's You know that's the best food? Right. Right. In prison. Right. I mean, what he, the hell he is this? That. <laughs> yes. He demanded that. Right, but, but so-called. But with our people, we don't get the same... And there's no black leaders uh, showing the injustice right. that is done. They're not going to bring the realism of what everybody saw on right. television. Watch this. The black woman that was surrounded by Edomites, they were screaming in her face, and she popped one. They fired the black woman, the police officer. They fired her. Right. The Edomites, 
that stepped out of the way of the right. white boys right. and let them pass, right. they all still got their jobs. Exactly. exactly. I'm like, what the hell is this? Nobody sees nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. Bishop, you know what's amazing about that footage? Because if, if you're really paying attention and y'all see how the rioters were uh, interacting with the cops and, and the police that was there, they were dealing with each other as if they were brothers. Right. They did not have that enemy versus, you know, they them didn't versus have that. Us. Right. Right. It, right. It, that was not there. They were actually talking to them like you're on our side and we're on your side and all that. Like they grew up together. Right. Because in the police academy, they teach, to that. in the police academy, they teach it's a us versus right. them right. mentality. That was not the case with them. That's how it is with us. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So. Give me a uh, Sirach 417. Talking about wisdom. Bishop, he yeah. said, you don't sit in the president's chair. He was asking him. Yeah. And talking Can you not to them. sit in the, the uh, president's, well, the vice president's chair? Why didn't turn the water hoses on all of them? They, and they should have let the dogs on Right. Them. Like they did with us in the 60s. Mm -hmm. So they said they couldn't have fixed it because it was too many. Oh, let me tell you something. Let me, I just, I'm glad you said that, y'all. So you got my mind popping. Now, see, that's why I need y'all around me to get my mind jump what is it called jump started you know if we let's say just a couple of us we go to do a robbery right. we go into uh, let's say we go to the bank to do a robbery right. and brother so-and-so over here one of the brothers or sister has a heart attack and died oh, yes. we're all charged with her death yes. Yes. not one of us yes. all thing. of us are charged with her death we're as accomplices that's a, that's, that's a law in the book it's all the books places right literally exactly if we go into the store or someplace to rob somebody, let's say Deacon Yawasaf said he get an attitude. Right. Uh, we all rob him, he, but we don't got he got attitude. Right. He shoots somebody and kill him. Right. We all get charged with that murder, yeah. all of us. But for some reason, they go to the Capitol. Right. Five, Five people, people die. died. No, got killed. Got, yeah, yeah, yeah. got killed. Got killed. Right. got killed, thank you. Right. Nobody's charged with their murders. And nobody says nothing wrong with this. Right. The, the injustice in terms of black people and white people is unfathomable. It's crazy. Ridiculous. They see what's wrong. They just can't say anything. But we're the black congressmen. Right. They the Latino congressmen. They they go, hey, mute. this ain't right. They're supposed to be charged with A, B, and C. They are all mute. They are mentally mute. They can't say anything. They These, see it, but right. they can't say nothing. These they can't say anything. Black Dang. and brown leaders are garbage. Every last one of them. Give me that in Sirach uh, 417 about wisdom. Ecclesiasticus or Sirach chapter 4 and verse 17. For at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways. So the wisdom of God, his discipline walks with us by crooked ways. That's as we're in our lives growing up. Go ahead. And bring fear and dread upon him. Because we get judged left and right. We always confuse as to why. Go ahead. And torment him with her discipline. See that? Wisdom will torment him with her discipline. Read. Until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws. Right, because then we're supposed to start getting our life right. Our lives right with the most high God. Watch this. Give me um, Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 5. Because in this truth, you're always tested. You're always tried. Nobody gets away with nothing. None of us. People often ask questions like, um, how do you know if you're tested by God or you're being judged by God? Well, that comes through self-examination. Some of you brothers and sisters know what I'm talking about. Okay, I give an example. If I slam my finger in the door, I know that didn't happen by accident. Like, I got to stop. What was I just thinking? Was a pair of breasts in my mind? Was I thinking about something that I slammed my damn finger or I stubbed my toe or I banged my fire? Look at that. And you know, funny bone ain't funny. Yeah, okay. I don't know why they call it that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I got to be like, what the hell did I do? What am I thinking? Sometimes you're being tested. Sometimes you're being judged. Okay. You got things going on in the house. You got to ask. Only you and God know. Brothers ask me, why is God doing it? I, bruh, I don't know what you're doing. At. I only know you when I see you. I don't know what you do when you leave here. Brother in his car, he crashed. I said, what happened? Why you crashed? I know why I crashed. I was looking at porn all night long. So he knew why he got in a car accident. You getting jacked up, your family getting jacked up, and you can lie. Bishop, this, I'm not doing nothing wrong. I'm doing everything right. Okay, then talk to the brothers around him. No, he's a nigga. He did A, B, and C. He's murmuring. He's gossiping. 
brother, he's no, brother, he's lying. So I said, okay, well, bro, that's between you and the Lord, then. All these brothers are lying on you. You can't make this stuff up. I'm like, okay, bro. All right, all right. What did I say? Go, what, Liam? Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 5. Read. For the Holy Spirit of discipline. The Holy Spirit of And that's why when the church said they got the Holy Spirit, nobody died. You know that song, The Freaks Come Out at Night? Y'all know, remember that old back in the day? Get, that's that Friday night. Guess what they had Sunday morning in the church? You find the freaks in the church. There's no discipline amongst them women or the men. Read it again. For the Holy Spirit of discipline. The Holy Spirit of discipline. So don't tell me you got the Holy Spirit and you can't discipline what you eat. Don't tell me you got the Holy Spirit and you, you sleeping with Tom, Dick, and Harry and Raheem. Don't tell me you got the Holy Spirit and you got all kind of women you banging. Don't tell me you got the Holy Spirit and you's a liar, a gossiper. A you don't have the Holy Spirit. Because there's no discipline in your life. Liar. Read it again. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. And you know, I'm going to tell you when the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. If you are asked questions and you purposely lie and are deceptive, that's when you see brother says, you know what? I have to go. Why are you, why are you leaving, bro? Uh, because of water baptism. I really believe we have to. Really? Is that the real reason you bouncing? Is it really water? Half the brothers that left out and got water baptized, they are twerking on Facebook. They go in the morning. One dude had his legs lift up to the camera. He turned his behind to the camera and started dancing. I'm like, what the hell? And he just got water baptized. I don't know what's wrong with y'all thinking that there's some power in the water. There's something in the water. Ah, uh, you can't make this stuff up. I'm like, yeah, that's the Holy Spirit right there. Discipline must begin early in life. Give me a uh, Sirach 30 and verse 3. Let me show you something. Now, this is all you single mamas out there. Discipline must begin early in life. Sirach chapter 30 and verse 3. He that teacheth his son. See that? He that teaches his son. Grieveth. The enemy. Grieveth the enemy. Grieveth the enemy. Was that it? And before his friends. And before his friends. He shall rejoice of him. He shall rejoice of him. So I want you to see that first. But he that teaches his son grieveth the enemy. Teach him what? Give me that in Deuteronomy 6 verse 1. Then jump to 7 please. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and 1. Now these are the judge. Now, these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments, which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that you might do them in the land whither you go to possess it. Mm -hmm. And these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. Where are you at? Verse 7. Verse 7. Okay, go ahead. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. That's the, the milk of the scriptures. A lot of brothers often ask, what is the milk of the scriptures? We're reading the milk right now. Teach the commandments to your children. You don't, you're not teaching your children about the 12 feathers. You're teaching your 12-year-old, I mean your child, about having no other gods before the Most High. No idols and no images to bow down and worship, not to take God's name in vain and lies. Okay, honor your father and mother. That's milk. Thou shalt not kill. Okay, thou shalt not commit adultery. That's milk. Those, those are basic laws that all children must learn. Read again verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. See that part right there? And thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. Sister, you don't have to sit down and have the Bible open all the time. You can discuss situations, create scenarios for children to know the difference between right and wrong according to God's laws. Read it again. And, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest. Read over verse seven, 7. Yes, sir. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in the house, and when thou walkest by the way. You see that part? And when thou walkest by the way. When you're walking down the street, you're not walking down the street with your child with the Bible open. You're discussing situations and scenarios that may happen in school or after school. What if this happens? What law is that? Your child must know the difference in God's laws. What law has been violated or broken that's the milk that's milk that everybody must know and i see a lot of people even adults right. grown up don't know 
God's, that's what the churches teach. God's laws are done away with. That's why in these churches you got adultery, you got extortion, you got thieving, stealing, all kind of sin going on. Read on, Leah. And when thou liest down. When you're lying down, when you're about to go to bed, discuss again. Just talk about the word God's commandments with your children. Go ahead. And when thou risest up. And when you up. get up in the morning. That's how your child learns. It's not always sitting there reading because some children learn different. Just talk and it'll, it'll go into their mind and memory. It's going to go there. Okay. From there, give me Sirach 30 and 11. Yeah, go ahead. Hold on. Uh, could you look up the word parent? Parent. Because what Bishop was just, when you correlate that with what we just read here in Deuteronomy 6 and 7, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. That's work there. Mm -hmm. And the reason why you're doing this is because you're trying to, you, it is your, well, we're going to read it. I want to get ahead of it. That, I want better than that. Move down. That's, that's, that's too weak. Well, let me read what I have since it's not pulling it up. The full meaning. Let me read it because this is not going to come up there. It says, what does parent mean? A father or mother. One who begets or one who gives birth to, to or nurtures and raises the child. That's the part that I wanted, raises, that raises the child. Raising a child means to teach your children discipline, meaning because if you don't discipline them, you will, leave them to the, you will leave them to the responsibility of a society who's not going to raise them. They're going to put them in jail, kill them, shoot them, give them a nightstick. The stun gun, jail time. That's what they're gonna get. But as a parent, the reason why that's the reason why you're supposed to have a certain mature level before you even given the opportunity to have children is because you're supposed to have some sense that's supposed to govern how you bring that child up. That's the point. So when you're talking about having a baby when you're immature, you're not gonna do nothing but create that monster that we just saw on the screen. That's what you're and, and that could be that could be spiritually. It doesn't have to be physically if you're if you're not. Uh, mature. If you're not, if you're not maturely enough, even in your old age, you will still bring forth children that could get caught up into foolishness. Okay. Exactly. So it's about discipline and uh, and making sure that you protect them. That's what the that's what the role of a parent is to do. Teach them diligent. We're reading it here. The definition is actually here in the Bible. That's what we just read. Read it again, and then I'm gonna give it back to Bishop. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and 7. Yes. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way. Bishop gave an example. He said, you might not have the Bible in your hand all of the time, but there's got to be times when you're having conversations about particular scenarios that you're seeing. Even if they're watching TV, or on the computer, whatever it is. You intercept that thing and say, what would you do in this case here? Anything that they're involved in, your job is to make sure that they know the difference between doing what God tells them to do or what Satan tells them to do. That's your job as a parent. It's not for them to just allow them to just be loose. Yes. Oh. Yeah, for instance, those of you all that, that have daughters, right? You might be driving, going somewhere with your daughter. You know, and you see a harlot walking on the street. You're like, yo, you see that hoe that sister dress right there? You let your daughter know that's a hoe right there. That's a harlot. Don't ever dress like that. You understand? That's how I talk with my daughters, you know? I like, you see her? You see, you see how she dress? That's a hoe right there, Zion. Yo, don't ever dress like that. You understand what I'm saying? You dress like that, daddy going to disown you. Okay? <laughs> hey, that's true. You got to let the little girls know. You, not only will daddy disown you, the men in your community will, will disrespect you, they will beat you, and they might even rape you. That's what happens when you dress a particular way. I don't see why some women don't understand that basic scenario. Give me that again in Sirach 30. We're going to read 11 down. Yes, sir. Sirach chapter 30 in verse 11. So now in conjunction with teaching your children the milk of the scriptures, God's commandments, read. Give him no liberty in his youth. And wink not at his follies. The Bible says, give him no liberty. No liberty in his youth and wink not at his follies. He make a mistake, don't turn a blind eye to it. You got to fix it right away. Read. Bow down his neck while he is young. Meaning what? You give him chores to do. Okay, go ahead. 
and beat him on the sides. So while, bow down his neck while he's young and beat him on the sides, right? Read. While he is a child. While he is a child, read. Lest he wax stubborn. Because if you decide I'm not going to do that, your child will wax stubborn. Go ahead. And be disobedient unto thee. The, see, this is what you got on the streets of New York. Exactly. And be disobedient unto thee. Go ahead. And so bring sorrow to thine heart. Yeah, because then he ends up doing some kind of crime, he or she, or, and goes to jail. Now the mama is home sorrowful. Go ahead. Chastise thy son and hold him to labor. That's the chores right there. Chastise thy son and hold him to labor. Go ahead. Lest his lewd behavior be an offense unto thee. Can we look up that word lewd? L-E-W-D. Lewd. Chastise thy son and hold him to give him chores in the house. Wash the dishes. Mop the floor. You, that's your daily chores. Well, I don't want my child to have to. We simple as hell. Look at that. Lewd. Lewd. Read that. Crude. In offensive in a sexual way. Yes, yeah, that's what lewd is. So if you decide you're not gonna give your child chores to do and hold him to labor, the Bible says, lest his lewd behavior be an offense unto because what is he doing while he ain't got no chores to do? He's sitting around watching things and thinking. He's on YouTube, or he's looking out the window, or some girl's texting him or her, and they start having sexual thoughts. You know when they get a certain age, they start smelling themselves. I smell something. I feel a little tingly down there. And they want to explore that. That's why it says, lest his lewd behavior be an offense unto thee. What did you want to say, else up? I was thinking about, because um, you mentioned in the class about single parents, I mean, in terms of discipline their children. Why is it that, because think about it. You usually hear of situations where children are not being disciplined primarily from single uh, parent households. Can I get a witness? Usually when the mother and the father is there, you don't, you don't normally, right. or, or, or should I say, you don't usually hear too much about issues where the, where the child is not being disciplined. Right. But in a, in a household where it's, where, it's, where it's just the father or the mother, and they're both not there, there's usually a spirit of, you know what, I don't really want to overdo it. I don't want to punish them too much and this and that and the other. And I just thought about that. The reason perhaps why that thought is there is because they feel like the discipline is an extra punishment on the fact because the father or the mother is absent. So it's like I don't want to add, I don't want to add to the to the trauma of my child not having both parents in the house. And what's going to end up happening, that child is going to repeat the cycle and it might end up dead because they're not being being uh, chastised. Hey, we saw, that, we saw that last night. All the kids last night is playing. One, I ain't going to say no names. One child decides I want to beat all the kids around me. Pop, pop, pop. Picks a toy up, busts another kid upside the head. Guess what? All the kids had parents except, I mean, two parents, except the one causing the problems. The one biting, kicking, being disrespectful. Single parent right there. Single, and, it, and, and it's not a phenomenon. It happens no, across the board. You can notice immediately. You see a child that's di told out of, out of line, that boy or girl was raised by his mama alone for a while. That's why when you brothers hook up with a sister that already got a kid, notice when you try to discipline the boy or the girl, the mother plays interference. No! Exactly. No, don't chastise! Right. That boy ends up a demon. We're all just like what did we just read? Let's his lewd behavior. What does it say? Bring it says, and so bring. I mean, the bottom of verse twelve. Let's his lewd. Bottom of verse twelve. Verse twelve, and be disobedient unto thee, and so bring sorrow to thine heart. Because now comes the police. Now you sorrowful, and you think back. The man I married, I always interfered with him, trying to discipline uh, this other man's child over here. The new man tried to become the father figure. Mother goes, no. Now comes the white man to lock your boy up because he ain't listening. Now the mother's sitting there biting her nails, sitting there, what should I do? I don't, Jesus, Lord. Sister, shut the hell up. This is your fault. You caused it on yourself. God tried to save you when he brought you that husband in the UIC. You fought the man tooth and nails who tried to discipline your son. Now the white man's involved. Now I want to fast. Now, oh, now you want to fast. Oh, now you want to pray. 
Wow. You can't make this stuff up. Sometimes our sisters are our, their own worst enemies. Watch this. Where am I at now? Get Deuteronomy 21, verse 18. So without the application of God's commandments that you're supposed to be teaching these boys or ch children, they grow up to be the monsters that we see today. Deuteronomy 21. Now, Deuteronomy 21 is about a two-family household. Because some kids is just the devil. I'm going to tell you straight. Some kids is just the devil. Regardless if they got a two-parent household. Watch this. Now, what, we, what you see with this two-parent household and their son, you see this on a major scale today with single-parent mothers. Read that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 21 and verse 18. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How many boy, brothers in here, I won't just raise your hand, were raised with a two-family house? Okay, watch this. How many of you was raised with just your mother? Okay, those are the problem ones right there. Those are the problem ones. Just keep an eye on them. <laughs> it's, 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 no, it's no joke because the mothers, the mothers would understand that there is a, uh, there is a psychological problem when the, when the father is not in the boy's life. And she'll try to protect him. That's the what I was talking about earlier. They're reluctant to discipline the child in the in the absence of the father because they like he's already traumatized because his daddy don't want him, and they think that that coddling him is going to actually benefit him when it's actually going to do worse than anything. All right. All right. Someone it. posted a comment just now regarding the class saying that they had no whipping, no weapons, and no chores. It ended up being pregnant at fourteen. That's the comment for this class now. Right, right. And that's what happens. That's what I... Hey, I don't know if any of y'all saw, uh, been seeing this. There's a series on Netflix called Narcos about Pablo Escobar. Anybody see that? If y'all get a chance, just watch, watch it. And it shows you how they coddle. It's Northern Kingdom. Yeah, I'm going to watch it. Now. They coddle their kids. And spend no bombing and all that stuff. And them kids grow up to be the most ruthless gangsters you've ever seen. I'm like, yo, these people is the demon. They's the devil. Wicked as hell. Wicked as hell. Where we at, Liam? Deuteronomy 21, verse 18. Mm -hmm. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son. See that? That's, some of y'all can relate to this thing right here. Go ahead. Which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother. Mm. And that when they have chastened him. Because they beat him on the sides. Go ahead. Will not hearken unto them. He still won't obey. Go ahead. Then shall his father... And his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of his city and unto the gate of his place. Mm -hmm. And they shall say unto the elders of his city, this our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. All he does is eat and drink, eat, sleep, and, you know, that's all this boy does. Go ahead. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he died. Mm. So shalt thou put evil away from among you. And all Israel shall hear in fear. So the boys that we saw in that video, God's judgment is they should have all been stoned and died. See, that's what people say. Now, of course, I know right now, I know what some of you are thinking, but this is, we're under Jesus. We're in the New Testament now. Give me that Matthew 15. You don't know the Jesus you think you know. Matthew, is it 15 and 3 or? F yes, sir. Read that. Matthew chapter 15, verse 4. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. That's what your Jesus said right there. But you don't, you don't read that in church. You will never hear the minister talk about that in church. In fact, you will never hear the minister say anything about the whorish women in the church and the evil, rebellious kids. Not one sermon. It's always about how good you look, prosperity. This is your season to make that money. That's all they talk about. What you gonna say, y'all? What's up? Yeah, when you was when we was reading earlier when you, when it said about uh, so this so he shall put away Israel, put away evil. Read that statement again, sir. Go. Deuteronomy 21 and verse 21. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he died. 
So shalt thou put evil away from among so them. So shalt thou put evil away from Israel. The objective of that judgment is to get rid of this evil so that nobody else uh, duplicate it. Right. So that it's not spread, so that it don't become a trend. Because he he got little friends. Exactly. He'll teach his other friends to do the same That's thing. That's the point behind that. They do the same thing now. Mm -hmm. When they put him in jail, they, they're basically saying the same thing. He cannot be in society. Mm -hmm. Hey, when I did school safety for a couple of years, Washington Heights... You know, wicked Dominicans up there. <laughs> they would we, we the gangs. You had uh, what's the gang up there? Nieta. It was Nieta. Who else? La Familia. I just remember Nieta. I remember Nieta. They were anyway. The point is this: after school, we had to chase the gangs away because they would try to get these kids to join them and learn. And these kids, were, they in school to try to get right, get their education. Right, right. These gang kids, boys and girls, would try to get them, boys and girls, to join their gang, fill their ranks, and teach, let, teach them evil. That's why Deuteronomy 18 was saying what it's saying, that did you put away evil from Israel? Because if you don't, they'll try and incorporate or, or educate them in their evil ways. The Lord said, here's the remedy for that. Here's the remedy. Now, in case you don't, we're gonna say all this up. There's a. I'm trying to remember the name of this. There was. A, there was this. Uh, hate to say it, a black man. He got arrested. This was a while ago. They actually had a thing where they would recruit young girls out of these prisons and make them prostitutes. Hmm. I got to find that article. I was looking at it a few months ago, and I wish I'd remember the whole thing. But Bishop, they would come in and they would put commissary. They would put money on their cards while they were in jail and communicate right in them and say, "You loved and this and that and the other." So they got a sugar daddy on the outside, wait for them to get out. As soon as they get out, they go work for him in prostitution. Wow! Wow! Hey, that brought me to my next thought. I forgot to mention this thing. The video we just saw about them three little negroes that bit the girl in the face. Right. Can you imagine if she allowed them, because somebody might, I know some sister might be saying, maybe she should have just let them buy her wine. No, no, wrong, wrong, wrong. You would have been, you would owe them dude some money. How are you going to pay me back now? I best paid $40 for your wine. Uh, uh, I, I don't think you get a snatcher behind in the car. We ain't going to ever see you again. You're going to be some hoe in Atlanta on the corner. They're going to hoe you out to get their money back. Chained up in a basement somewhere. These are true stories. Okay? That's what happens. Now, give me the next video. Give me Facebook. You sisters, listen good. I know some of you single, and you just want, you want this so bad. You just want this thing. No, no, not that one. Yes, that one. This, I call this, this, this is how, this is Black Hebrew Israelite 101. How to be a Black Hebrew Israelite. Listen, sisters, this, this dude got game. I want you, wait, watch this. Watch this. Brothers, watch this. How many sisters in here are single and you live on your own? Raise your hand. One, two, only three, four, five, six. Only six sisters. Okay. Sit this school is small today. I want you single sisters to watch the black Hebrew Israelite doctrine. Watch this. Play that. So basically what you do is you go over to girl house, you know what I'm saying? This is the first time she let you come through, you know what I'm saying? You've got to hit her at her house the first time. This is the only way the plan is going to work. So you get her to let you come over there and hit her at her crib. You dog it down, you feel me? Beat the doonies all the way down, you feel me? And then fall asleep, you know what I'm saying? But you got to make sure it's on a day that you know she got to go to work in the morning. You feel me? So you come over there, kill it, fall asleep. If she wake up in the morning and just go to work and don't wake you up and tell you to leave or nothing like that, then just don't never leave. Just, just post up, you know what I'm saying? When she come back, be there. You know what I'm saying? This is we go back a second. Go, God. You got y'all got to hear this thing. This is gang black Hebrew Israelites. This is what they do. These camps. You got to hear the the, the the mentality behind these dudes. Damn. You up and tell you to leave or nothing like that? Then just don't never leave. <laughs> just 
post up, you know what I'm saying? When she come back, be there, you know what I'm saying? Dishes washed, you feel me? Like, you get to cook some little burgers, some little dilly burgers, you find some little hamburger meat in the freezer, and make some little dilly hamburgers and fries when she got off work, like, blunt roll. Now you in there, if she let you stay that night and you hit her again that night, and then she wake up and go to work again, you live there. You feel me? Go get some clothes, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Go get some clothes. Just leave the door unlocked. Go grab you some clothes. Leave the door unlocked so you can get back in. You don't never want to not be there. You don't never want her to be able to get in the crib while you ain't there until you all the way locked in. You know what I'm saying? So... Yeah, that's the move, man. Just go over there and kill it one time and uh, post up. <laughs> so these dudes got get. That's the black Hebrew Israelite theology. That's how, that's how they get all these multiple. Wives. That's how they do this. It's game. Just never leave. Just post up. Yeah, you in there. And you know what's funny? Uh, women complain about the same type of son that they're raising. They'll say, you men ain't no damn good. Y'all, but then, check their kids. The same child will grow up to be exactly what she's complaining about you. You ain't SH. Right. That's what she's raising at home. And then somebody's going to say to her kid, you ain't no daggone good. And then she's going to have a, be a single mama, yeah. and it's like a cycle. Yeah. You just raise these monster kids and then complain there's no good men. Why is there no good men, sister? Because she raised them in her image. Yep. That's what's wrong. That is what is wrong. Give me Sirach 11. Ain't no good men out there. You should know you raised them. <laughs> Sirach 11. Give me verse 29. Ecclesiasticus or Sirach chapter 11 verse 29. Bring not every man into thine house. Sisters, listen good. Bring not every man into thy house. So if you single, at home, like the brother just said, we just watched it. He said then, after you, he said you got to dog her out the day before she goes to work. And then once you go to work and she lets, she don't tell you to leave, just never leave. Just post up. Just stay there forever. You got to think of these dudes as bums. These dudes is bums. They, they went to bum university. They learned that. That was a, that was a, that was a syllabus. They learned that thing. The yeah. Curriculum on how to do it. Bumhood. Bumhood 101. Bumhood 102. So far. Go ahead. Yeah. And, and the crazy thing about it too, right? The crazy thing. Once somebody's staying in your apartment for more than 30 days. I know this is the law in New York. You can get them out. In New Jersey, New York, somebody got a mail coming coming to your address. They've been there for more than 30 days. You can never get them out. <laughs> and it don't take a lot. They just order some magazine or something. We'll have the magazine or the bill sent to the house. That's it. Never never pay the bill or nothing. Just as long as it shows there. I got my address yeah. on it. You done. Yeah, this is Will, for Will. Because there's a sister when I was in Instagram. She said, dude, come in. Three months. He said three months. Dude been there for three years. <laughs> three years. She trying to learn the scripture from dude. Dude said, no. Okay, you want to learn scripture? Three years. He still cannot pull the dude out. This is Will. Israelite game for Will. Read that again, Officer Leon. Yes, sir. Bring not every man into thine house, for the deceitful man hath many trains. Right. He got many ways of how to uh, disrupt your life. He come up in your house. Never leave. You make a little burger in them like when she come home. Clean a little bit so she don't feel no kind of way. Billy it's burger. game. Billy burger. Yeah, belly burger. I'm going to make a damn belly burger. These dudes got games. I don't see why some of you sisters don't see that. I know why you don't see it. But it was just so good. It was so, so good. You just don't. A night of this. I know kids going, why is Bishop waving the mic around? A night of this. And compared to a life of misery with this Negro in your house, that it don't equal. It don't equal. Jump down to verse uh, 34 for me. Receive a stranger into thine house, and he will disturb thee. 
and turn and turn thee out of thine own. Right. Everything you got is now his. Mm. How to be a bum 101. This is how you do it. <laughs> Receive a stranger into thine house and he will disturb thee. He'll disrupt your whole way of living. That was a Zoom class. Yeah, that was a Zoom class. A lot of brothers was on there watching that thing too. Taking notes. Yep. Get Sirach 36 verse 26. Ecclesiastes 36, 26. Sirach 36 and verse 26. Who will, who will trust a thief well appointed that skippeth from city to city? So who will believe a man that hath no house and lodgeth wheresoever the night taketh him? Sisters, y'all got to understand this. This dude go from this city to that city. You don't, the city, you don't know what he do. You meet this dude, and he got no place to stay. He over at Pookie's house all the time. Or he's still at his mama house or his auntie's house. He see you got a house. You got an apartment. And he'll make his way in there. And that's what? He'll never leave. Read it again. So read this again. Yeah, Bishop. Yeah. There's a customer I pick up not too long, probably like three weeks ago. He said dude came to the house, his cousin. She's saying that he lived that dude lived there for three days. She's saying that dude start eating every food. Then when I when I drop off, I see that dude. It's a dude I used to he used to go to school with me. Mm. I look at that dude, I put my mask on so quick. <laughs> <laughs> bum, man, that's some bum people out here. <laughs> Who will trust a thief well appointed? That skip it from city to city. Because when you talk, when you meet some brothers, they now I'm not maybe some brothers used to be thieves. That's all right. They repent. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking well, then again. Let me pause on that. Pause. You gotta pause because sister when a married dude, she just met for three months. Right. Sister, we don't know this dude. He's been with us three months, and you want to marry him? You simple as hell. And he lived in this city, he lived in that city, he lived in at least eight different cities. This, he running from something. You got to watch these, these city skippers. Some sisters do that too. Right. Bishop, the verse is asking a question. Right. Read it again. <laughs> Who will trust a thief well appointed that skipping from city to city? That's a question that the sisters need to answer. Mm -hmm. Which one of you will allow this? And the question is, what sister would do this? A sister that was not raised properly, mm -hmm. that were not taught about r recognizing BS like what we just saw on the screen. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of sister that'll go for this. So exactly. they will trust him. Mm -hmm. And he'll get up in there, and he would, what the man said, and Never don't leave. leave. <laughs> <laughs> Dog it out. Mm -hmm. Read. So who will believe a man that hath no house? So, sisters, you meet a brother. He has no house. He has no dwelling. He's homeless. When I say homeless, I ain't talking about on the street. I mean, he don't have his own place of residence. He's, he knows, he's, he's with his mommy or he's with Jojo Rahim. Read that part again. Yeah, Bishop, some of them know their game. They got nice whip, man. Bums. Yeah, they got nice cars. They got nice whip. Some got real nice cars. And they cars in their mama name. Go ahead. So, who will believe a man that have no house and lodgeth wheresoever? Sister, so when you get into a dude's car, if you get in, just have, you know how you be, look, you say, I need a tissue, I'm going to blow my nose, open the glove compartment, and, and fidget around and look for the registration. <laughs> who, who is this person on this registration? Oh, 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 I thought you said this was your car. Oh, well, you know, you know, uh, uh, my mom is going to transfer it into my name. You know, just give us some time. Sisters, y'all got to be slick, too, because brothers got game. I'm telling you, I'm trying to save you from a lifetime of heartache and pain. Read it again. So, who will believe a man that have no house and lodges wheresoever the night taketh him? Yeah, he go wherever the night takes him. You don't want to hook up with a dude like that. The hell is going on here? Give me Ciroc 6 and 8. And one sister, I don't know. Let me. See, I don't know what's wrong with some of y'all. One sister, she, uh, she, she's a. Uh, here she got a little job going on here. She got a job. She lived with her parents, but she got a job. My wife wanted my daughter to work in the mall. I said, Oh hell no! She ain't working in no damn mall. 
I know what happens in the mall. You brothers know what I'm talking about. You see a good looking girl working in the mall, she, she gonna get it. I'm gonna get her one of these days, I'm gonna get her. You make sure you're there every day when she, what's your work schedule? You make sure you're there. She might play hard to get in the beginning, but just wear her down. I'm gonna get that thing. So you brothers, it's letting your young girl work out there. I'm telling you, it's a mess. So here go, here we go. Young girl, she get, she making good money. Young girl, she decide, I'm gonna get my no no. She's uh, the father just happens to be checking the uh, mm -hmm. the uh, I told him to talk about his ass behind. Check her phone. Mm -hmm. She made plans to get her own. She put money on her own apartment. And was talking with, I'm going to call a nigga Pookie. Talking with Pookie. Let me tell you what Pookie, Pookie got bad credit. Sister got good credit. Sisters, brothers, y'all know that women mostly got good credit. We all effed up. I'll say y'all, y'all, y'all effed up. Anyway, Pookie convinces her to get her own place. Why? So Pookie could move in and never leave. Why? Because Pookie's a bum. I'm telling you, that's what happens. These dudes got game out there. And if y'all don't teach your kids, if, if my, Lord forbid, my daughter grow up and be stupid as a rock, that's shame on her. I'll rise from my grave and be, woo, I told your stupid ass. <laughs> Lord forbid. Yeah, yeah, Bishop, you will yeah. ask for one, for one more, one more, uh, one more thing. Lord, give me one more thing. Yes. Hey, bring me back. Bring yeah, me bring back. Me back. Yes, I can one tell her. Two seconds. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look at sir, uh, Ecclesiastes six. We're gonna read eight to twelve. Yes, sir. It's Rock chapter six and eight. Listen, sisters. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. See that some man is a friend for his own occasion, meaning he looked to see what you got. And will not abide in the day of thy trouble. And will not abide. Let me tell you the story. I tell you all the story all the time. Remember a little brother that was here? Well, a little fat brother, brother that was with us. He found a sister who had her own house. And we told him, you're not ready to get married, bro. Don't marry her. He says, why? I said, because you're not ready yet. Sister comes up from Georgia. I like him. I want to talk to him. We says, I sat right here and said, sister, he's not ready yet. I said, did you tell her all the problems you got? You live with your mommy. You got issues. Don't, don't, now, now see, he now he's mad. I'm going to tell you all straight. If, you, if I see you trying to run game on a sister, I'm not letting you get away with this. But now if the sister is that damn dumb, because I'm telling her, Bishop, that's he the ain't job ready. Of, was you here? Yeah, yeah. Well, was whatever, yeah, right. exactly. Bishop, Josiah. that's the job of a parent. Exactly. What you were doing was the job of a parent. The rest of that definition said that he is the parent is a guardian. Right. To guard over, to watch over. Go the ahead. dude had no, no good, no good, ex no. Meaning, there was nothing good that we could say about the brother to the sister. Right. Everything was negative. And I said, bro, I hate to do this, but right. you're not really, you, you're not, um, you're not marriage material yet. Right. Bishop, you a hater. You just hating. No, I'm trying to save her. That's crazy. Damn. Because you're going to destroy her. I, so then I didn't know nothing about her. I just met her. Right. So I had to call Georgia and find out about this sister. They said, well, we really don't know this sister. So I say to sister, you got kids? She says, uh, yeah, I got kids. I said, where's the baby daddy? Is he crazy? She said, he's not crazy. He just lives on so and so. We got it. We just friends. I don't take nothing from him. I'm a nurse. I got this going on. She said, I can help this brother, whatever he needs. So you know why she was saying that? She was desperate for this. She wanted this thing right here. I said, well, his thing right here, it ain't. No, you better. Yeah. Right. Oh, no, no, no. Anyway. So. You know, brothers, you get too big. You can't see your friend. He ain't seen his friend in years. He got to check to see if it's still there. Anyway, let me get on with the story. <laughs> so we tell his sister, I said to her brother, listen, she got kids. I, I don't agree with this. So anyway, they decide they're going to do the backdoor thing. They sneaking. So he goes down to Georgia to sneak with the sister. And the brothers in uh, Georgia said, y'all doing anything? No, no, we friends. We just talking. We just talking. 
middle of the night, who comes along? The black ninja. He jumps through the window, flies through the glass, and rolls on the floor. Ninja suit. In his ninja suit, the ninja nigga. Glass everywhere. He grabs her phone. He sees it. He's texting. He sends a mass text out of all their texts. The, text. the nasty texts. And it gets to Captain Amazaya. He wake up and like, bing, 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 bing. He's like, what is this? What's going on here? Oh, it was good last night. You did me right, and it was good, and this and that. I had to wipe my face off. What the, the, all kind of stuff going on here. You can't make this stuff up. So then they get busted. The, thank you, Black Ninja. I never, never, never thank you. Thank you, Black Ninja. Wherever you are, wherever you is, thank you. It was crazy. Where, where we at, Officer Leon? Oh, so Rock chapter 6, verse 8. Go ahead, read that again. <laughs> for some man is a friend for his own Let's occasion. Seven. Verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. You can't prove nobody in three months. You can't prove nobody in three months. Go ahead. And be not hasty to credit him. Yeah, he's good. He's all right. This is, yeah, he's all right. He's good. We want to get married. Now, how long have you been caught in three months? You, sister, you are stupid. Mm. I'm going to tell you straight. Don't ask me. You're going to get embarrassed. You better talk to uh, Laba talk to or, or Captain Zeph over there. Because if you ask me, I'm going to call you stupid to your face. Yeah, or talk to Asaph. He's nice to everybody. You know, Asaph, <laughs> he's the nicest brother in Israel. Talk to him. But me, I'm going to tell you stupid. Bishop, you remember when you said, she said, I'm going to fix him. Yeah. The dude was all jacked up. She had, she's a nurse. She said, I could fix him. Now she went Instagram, she left the, the dude, and she went back to the black ninja, the crazy dude. Because he had a black ninja. Because he had a, his black ninja, anyway. Where are we at, Officer Liam? For a seven. Five. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first, and be not hasty to credit him. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. Some man is a friend for his own occasion. Go ahead. And will not abide in the day of thy trouble. Right. So what is that going into? So some man is a friend for his own occasion. You got your, you got your own place. He ain't got no place. He almost homeless. He move in with you. He dogs it out. You leave to work in the morning and he never leave. He just stay there. Now the light bill got to be paid. Rent is due. And you say to him, hey. I got trouble paying this bill and that bill. Can you help me out? Now he's mad. That's what, see that part? And will not abide in the day of thy trouble. He gone. He looking for the next sucker sister. Sucker sister. Anyway, go ahead. I ain't even going to play with that. Go ahead. I'm going to leave it alone. Go ahead. <laughs> for, some, for some man is a friend for his own occasion. It will not abide in the day of thy trouble. Go ahead. And there is a friend who being turned to enmity and strife will discover thy reproach. And you sisters are simple. You let a brother take pictures of you while y'all butt naked. He taking photos of you while y'all doing the do. Let me tell you, that's a mistake. I, I would never suggest that because he'll use them pictures as blackmail. Yep, leverage. leverage. And you know, it'll only work on a sister that's trying to put on the air that she's righteous. That ain't gonna work on a hoe. Right, yeah. Hope that you put that picture all over the face. I don't give a damn. Like, yeah, no yeah hope be like you ain't, I give you a better picture <laughs> click here take this but a sister that's trying to do right he gonna use it as blackmail on her cause she was that simple let him video uh huh we had a brother like that remember the brother that was where he did, did, did a, a porn his little stupid self yeah. put it all on dude it's simple as hell I think Jonah still got the video <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, and if the dude gets stupid, we're going to put it back. No, I'm, I'm messing up. You better watch yourself out there. Where we at, Officer Leon? Uh, uh, verse, verse 10. Go ahead. Again, some friend is a companion at the table. See that, sister? And that, you ever see on Facebook some of these women? They always showing their plates of food. Sister, you think you got game with your food. Let me tell you something. You showing all that good food and all that? Read it again for her. Read it again. Again, 
Some friend is a companion at the table. He got more game than you, sis. You think you're getting that man because of your good food? Let me tell you. He going to move in there. And he going to eat all your food. And he said he ain't leaving. And he He ain't never going to leave. (laughs) He going to post up in your house. He ain't leaving. Read that again. Again, some friend is a companion at the table. And if you got to draw a man with food, sis, come on, you got to other qualities. What is there about you to make him want to... Get with you. Is it your food? That's all you got? I mean, it's good. Men like women that can cook. Don't get me wrong. But you got to have other qualities about you, other characteristics, other skills. Read that again. There's no skill about that. Everything smells like chicken. <laughs> oh, again, again, some friend is a companion at the table and will not continue in the day of thy affliction. Yeah, when you're getting, when things going bad for you, sis, he out. Go ahead. But in thy prosperity, he will be as thyself and will be bold over thy service. So now today we ain't got no servants, but we got friends and family. When they come to visit her, he act like that's his place. He telling your friends and family, oh, don't sit there, sit over here. Don't eat that. Don't use that utensil. Use this one. Like he bought this stuff. Like that was his. Nigga, you just posted up. That's all you did. But he said, I take, I'm taking over. She that simple to let me in. Read. If thou be brought low, he will be against thee mm-hmm. and will hide himself from thy face. Right. If you brought you going to hard times, he's going to be against you. He's going to hide himself. There's at least 92. I'm going to just say 92%. I'll just throw that number out there. At least 92% of you brothers fit. I'm talking about online too. Not everybody in here, but online. Yeah. I'm going to get my word right. At least 92% of you brothers fit what we've gone over. But we are here to help y'all. Some of you brothers, you're going to listen to what we're saying. Some won't. But what about the women? Do they listen? Because the same is true. Tag, you said no. The same is true for them. We try to help brothers how not to be a bum. How to get preeminent. How to have the preeminence. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth